has not gone well. He decides to retreat to the planet of Titan III until he can work things out. Unfortunately, the twin dilemma will follow him there. Next week, the Doctor and Perry investigate an intergalactic distress call and meet an old nemesis. Be with us next Sunday night at 11 and witness the attack of the Cyberman. You know, running for president is a hazardous business, ain't it? The Cybermen are in trouble, beaten off Telos by the Cryons. Where to go? Well, Earth would be nice, but that would mean changing history. Can they do it? The answer will follow in the attack of the Cybermen. Next week, the Doctor stars in a video nasty on the planet Varos. Considering that the stars of the nasties often die, it would seem the Time Lord might have a problem. We'll learn if he escapes vengeance on Veros next Sunday evening at 11. On the planet Varos, slaves are kept mollified by watching video nasties. What are they? We will soon know. And the doctor will learn what it's like to perform in one as well as the quality of vengeance on Varos. Is she the mistress of a local bathhouse? Or is she a notorious time lady? The doctor will search for the answer, as well as who is seeking to retard the development of the Earth when we discover the Mark of Rani next Sunday night at 11. Tonight, the doctor must double his effort as he confronts twin adversaries, the master and the renegade time lady, Ronnie, and he must do it in a bathhouse. So have your towels ready as we attempt to cover Mark of the Ronnie. The Smithsonian has been called the nation's attic with more than 134 million... Tonight... The doctor confronts a supreme instrument of destruction and finds something vaguely familiar about it. Or would that be understating the case? Judge for yourself. Prepare to gaze upon the face of evil. Next week, the doctor travels to a distant planet to do battle with a mad scientist who plans to rule through the strength of the mechanical minions he has created. They are the Robots of Death. Everyone views sparks as something ephemeral. Can the doctor dissuade Leela from thinking that any unusual occurrence is caused by magic? Can he persuade her to give up her crossbow? More to the point, can his knowledge and her intuition overcome the challenge that faces them? The Robots of Death. Maybe. Next week in Victorian London, the Doctor finds himself embroiled with the tongue of the Black Scorpion. Be with us next Sunday night at 11 for The Talons of Wang Chiang. Five and a half million years ago, the Mediterranean was born. An abandoned lighthouse in a dense fog on the English seacoast. A setting for Boris Karloff or Basil Rathbone? No, there is far more than earthly dread here, as we will soon perceive in The Horror of Fang Rock. Be with us next time for an incredible voyage and the first appearance of the wonderful invention of Professor Marius when Doctor and Leela confront the invisible enemy. Tuesday, November 24th, an evening devoted to science. Next week, the doctor lands on present-day Earth to find a scientist running tests on a 12-million-year-old human skull that holds within far more than he could imagine. Be with us next Sunday night at 11 for Image of the Fendal. And mark your calendar now for two weeks from tonight. A regular Doctor Who presentation will be preceded at 10 p.m. by the special called Who's Who. The invisible enemy overcome, we have nothing more to do but wait until next week at this same time when we meet the image in the Fendal. Actually, we've got a lot to do. 
We're going to wait around for the two Ronnies coming up shortly, and Jody and I are going to remind you that this official BBC copyrighted 1987 replica of Tom Baker's scarf is yours as a $200 premium when you call 1-800-237-1100. And it's big enough for two, Huge. or three, or four, depending on how large or small your friends and relations are. This is a terrific scarf. We showed it to you earlier. It is completely washable. You have to drag it on the floor, no problem. Toss it in the machine, it'll come out just fine. Yours with a $200 subscription. It's a lot of money, we understand that. Everyone can't afford it, but if you can, you might want to use your MasterCard or Visa to make it a little easier. Call us at 1-800-237-1100. And don't forget this other super Doctor Who premium. That is the mug with the disappearing tarts. Is it magic? Of course it's magic. Airplanes flying are magic. Watch this. As the coffee enters the mug, the TARDIS begins to fade away. Alas, we don't have the sound effects, but you have those in your mind. Maybe you've got the Doctor Who record at home and you can play it as it disappears. 1-800-237-1100, $60 will bring you the Doctor Who TARDIS mug. $200 subscription will bring you the Doctor Who official scarf. And you'll also get 11 Magazine for 12 months and Chicago Magazine for 12 months. That's just one yap. The important thing is that the money is going to keep buying Doctor Who programs. 1-800-237-1100. You have further information for and us. And don't forget the rest of the programs that you get. Because when you send in that $200 subscription, get the scarf, the magazine, you get 10,000 programs throughout the year. Make the call now. 1-800-237-1100. Stunning. Call the scarf for $200. Call, there'll be an operator, they want your name, your phone number, the amount that you want to subscribe in. And remember that you can charge it on your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express card. You can send us a money order or a personal check, whatever the choice. Make the call now. 1-800-237-1100 is the number. Coming up in just a little bit, we have some comedy. The two Ronnies will be starting in, in just oh, about another 50 seconds here. $200 for the scarf. The mug that you saw is a $60 premium. Remember, these are our way of saying thank you. You Doctor Who fans have probably waited a long time for something like this. I know I've seen some of the things we've had before, the, the t-shirt and a few other things. Nothing beats this. Washable. It is so long, you can put five people inside this scarf. It's fabulous. It really is. Stay tuned. The number is 1-800-237-1100. We have the two Ronnies coming up. Channel 11, become a subscriber now. Those dollars will go to bring you more Doctor Who, more comedy, more programs throughout the year. 1-800-237-1100 is the number. Monday, November 30th, get a taste of the holidays, beginning with a frugal gourmet Christmas special. Can you imagine kids eating this how many hundred years ago? 250 years ago? It's a great Christmas treat. All right, mix it up with your fingers. Just toss. Wait, but how'd you get in there? You didn't wash your hands yet. Then oh, Julia Child makes a traditional I'm Christmas Yule you. log. This is a jelly roll in wolf's clothing. And this is the wolf. No, this is the jelly roll. Justin Wilson celebrates New Year's time in Cajun country. And you're going to go back in there, so don't be trying to get away from me. <laughs> Buffet's ready, everybody. Take your plates, and I hope you enjoy it. And Martha Stewart prepares a holiday feast. It's all part of a special Taste of the Holidays Night on Channel 11. Join us for some Seasons Eatings, Monday, November 30th. Wednesday, December 2nd, an evening of holiday specials begins with an exciting ice ballet based on the timeless fairy tale Sleeping Beauty. Olympic champions Robin Cousins and Rosalind Sumners appear in the starring roles. Then, from England's Ely Cathedral, diva Jessie Norman performs both seasonal and sacred music. And St. Albans Abbey is the setting for flutist James Galway's Christmas music special. It's an evening of holiday specials coming to you from Channel 11 on Wednesday, December 2nd. Thursday, December 3rd. 
Alan Arkin stars as a domineering father who refuses to buy a Christmas tree as a matter of principle. This is my house, and I will not stand for no tree! Hey, Purdy, this is our house! And if you touch so much as a needle of that tree, I'll leave you. Then Deborah Carr and Claire Bloom star in Anne and Debbie, between a deceased man's wife and mistress. As far as lack of energy goes, I would have thought you the better judge. In that case, I'd say he'd have lasted until a hundred. And on mystery, it's the conclusion of Gaudy Night. Feeling like Judith is part of the job. I've always known it's no job for a gentleman. Nor a lady, it would seem. It's all part of a special drama night, Thursday, December 3rd, including Mystery, Anne and Debbie, and A Matter of Principle. Friday, December 4th, Channel 11 presents an evening of musical masters. First, we'll review the highlights of the illustrious career of... Bing! 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 Bing Crosby, remembered by such friends and associates as Bob Hope, Jane Wyman, Mel Torme, Mary Martin, and Donald O'Connor with your host Dorothy L'Amour. Then, works of George Gershwin are performed in a retrospective featuring Drew Barrymore, Mikhail Barishnikov, Rosemary Clooney, Bob Dylan, Michael Feinstein, Johnny Green, Madeline Kahn, Maureen McGovern, Liza Minnelli, Harold Nicholas, Cheetah Rivera, Bobby Short, Tommy Toon, Christopher Walken, and your host, Michael Tilson Thomas. Celebrating Gershwin. It's wonderful. Friday, December 4th, right after Remembering Bing. <laughs> My name is Linda. You're watching Channel 11 in Chicago. On the planet Karn are members of a sisterhood who guard an eternal flame that produces the elixir of life. The only living beings, that is, besides Professor Solon and the brain of Morbius. Who's going to win the Channel 11 sweepstakes? We're drawing and announcing the... And more fun with Uncle Bobby. CP Zip 104 with more music and more fun with Uncle Bobby. Travel to a desolate planet, which transpires to be Scaro, the home of his deadliest enemy. Observe with us now the destiny of the Daleks. Next week, what begins as a holiday in Paris develops into something more sinister when the Dokmana meet an English detective. Then they will travel to another time and another place, the City of Death, next Sunday night at 11. Saturday, March 12th, it's just what the doctor ordered. More than six... Tuesday, March 15th, join us for an entire evening of science adventure as we... I get the jobs the polite guys pass over. I get the cases the guys who don't sing don't get. I'm the piano tuner who's heavy on the pedal. My mama done told me The Singing Detective. It may seem to be a mystery or a musical, but it all takes place in the mind of a writer of cheap detective fiction, confined to a hospital bed. I have occasionally seen patients who are just as bad, sometimes worse than you are. 
but I think it's fair to say that none of them reacts in quite the way that you do with such aggression. What do they do? Sing madricals? Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. The Singing Detective, where film noir meets fantasy. We are cheap, Marley. Ten cents a dance, fella. Meet The Singing Detective, Monday at 9. Ancient Lives. Archaeologist John Romer tells the story of the people who built the great temples of Egypt and who lived their lives together in a simple village, a village of craftsmen. Here, hidden away, the little village of our workers, the special men that went down into the underworld in the Valley of the Kings. An extraordinary group of people. The award-winning series begins Monday at 11.15. Next, on Nova. From these poverty-ridden streets in Madras, India, came one of the great minds of mathematics, Srinivasa Ramanujan. A lowly clerk with little formal education, he baffled the greatest minds at England's Cambridge University with his ability in pure mathematics. What inspired this clerk whose theories were so advanced that scholars still learn from them today? The man who loved numbers. That's next time on Nova. Watch Nova Tuesday at 8. Watching Channel 11, WTTW Chicago. And Bancroft and Shirley MacLaine star in a special movie presentation, The Turning Point. What's it like to be you now? A dance. I take class, I rehearse, I perform, I go home to my hotel. I thought I was good tonight. I wanted to be for you. You couldn't help being good. Enjoy it tomorrow evening at 9 o'clock. You're watching WNIT-TV Public Television. South Bend, Elkhart. Funding for Doctor Who has been made possible by the members of Channel 34 and WCCP Zip 104 with more music and more fun with Uncle Bobby. brings all his time lordly powers into play in confronting the invasion of time. To order the Doctor Who video collection on two VHS cassettes featuring the robots of death and pyramids of Mars. Next week, the Doctor screws his courage to the sticking place and sets out for the pirate planet. Join him next Sunday night at 11. Hello, Chicago! We now join the following program in progress. His Jerusalem counterpart. David Dinkins arrived in Israel Sunday and later spoke at a dinner hosted by Jerusalem Mayor Teddy Kollek. Dinkins praised Israel's restraint in the face of Iraqi Scud missile attacks. Monday, he'll meet with Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir. He says his visit is a show of solidarity with Israel. The people of Israel can be certain that the hopes and the prayers of the American people, and more than that, our own sons and daughters, are with them today and every day until this danger passes. Supporters of Operation Desert Storm paraded from Washington, D.C.'s Lincoln Memorial to the White House Sunday. 
People among the crowd of at least 2,500 burned an Iraqi flag, waved American ones, and chanted pro-troop slogans. The group was met at 16th Street by dozens of motorcycle-riding Hells Angels who joined their march. In Morocco, the chants were in support of Iraqi President Saddam Hussein on Sunday. About 300,000 protesters rallied in the capital city of Rabat. It was the largest pro-Iraq rally in an allied country since war erupted. Protesters demanded coalition forces, which include about 1,200 Moroccan troops, leave the Persian Gulf. Pope John Paul says the Gulf War is a growing threat for all humanity. During his usual Sunday speech from a balcony overlooking St. Peter's Square, the Pope urged the crowd to stand up against war. His speech coincides with Life Day, the Italian Roman Catholic Church's day to honor the protection of life. The war hits home daily for those who have loved ones serving in the Gulf. They hope the separation will only be a temporary one. Sunday, many Americans across the nation joined them in prayer. Patty Paniccia reports. Peace on Earth is what Americans prayed for Sunday. President Bush declared it a national day of prayer. We pray that the good God would soften the hearts, enlighten the minds of our adversaries. President Bush asked Americans to pray for peace, pray for the troops and their families, and pray for innocent people caught up in the war. I just cannot comprehend what all this fighting is for. Southern California's Crystal Cathedral welcomed guest speaker, Attorney General Richard Thornburg. It was said at the time of our Revolutionary War, these are the times that try men's souls. At a Baptist church in Jacksonville, North Carolina, most of the members are military dependents from Camp Lejeune. We thank you for our president. We ask your blessing on him today. In Atlanta, the Big Bethel AME Church has publicly opposed the war and offered sanctuary to anybody who does not want to serve. At least one churchgoer called for more than just a prayer of peace. Prayer needs to be focused on, on getting an ultimate resolution of the, of the overall problem versus uh, just uh, we need to support our troops. In New York, the Veterans Affairs Medical Center observed the day by asking for a lasting peace. And that this maybe will truly be the last war. Catholics at the National Shrine in Washington, D.C. also prayed for peace. All will come to see more clearly not that which divides them, but that which united them. Prayer services were also held in Chicago and in other cities around the country. But some Americans criticized President Bush for declaring a national day of prayer. He is contradicting himself when he says, you know, he'd like prayer. I mean, prayer, obviously, he's praying for peace. And uh, with the bombing, he's not actually having any kind of peace at all. But for many Americans, Sunday's day of prayer was a time of song and support for those in the Middle East and for each other. Patty Panicha for CNN, Los Angeles. In Chicago, one person responded to President Bush's call for prayer by protesting it. Atheist Rob Sherman told a press conference Mr. Bush's prayer day was in direct violation of the constitutional separation of church and state. He said by calling for it, the president showed as little regard for the Bill of Rights as Saddam Hussein has shown for the Geneva Conventions. In other news, President Bush says the Gulf War is putting the partnership between federal and state governments to the test. He addressed members of the National Governors Association Sunday night during a black tie dinner at the White House. And what I'm talking about is urging that at least 15 billion in domestic programs be turned over to the states in one single grant, fully funded, and with the flexibility uh, that you need to manage effectively. Members of the Governor's Association said they were enthusiastic but cautious of Bush's plan. An official at the coroner's office says all the bodies have been removed from the wreckage at a Los Angeles International Airport from Friday's plane collision. Authorities say 33 passengers aboard a U.S. Air jetliner and a commuter plane were killed when the two aircraft collided. The victims include all 12 passengers and crew on the SkyWest turboprop 
and 21 of the 89 people aboard the Boeing 737. Investigating authorities say they are listening to taped conversations of the deadly accident for clues. The cockpit voice recorder has been removed from its casing. It has been examined. We have quality problems, uh, I gather, of a serious nature with the cockpit voice recorder due to some mechanical malfunction and perhaps tape condition. Uh, there will be an effort made to enhance that. There are some things that can be heard on it, um, but it's, um, it's, it is, it's not in good condition. The collision was the worst accident at the airport since January 1969 when a Boeing 727 plunged into the ocean after taking off, killing 38 aboard. A United Airlines 737 lost its hydraulic system shortly before landing in San Francisco on Sunday. The jet skidded 4,000 feet and off the end of its runway before coming to a stop. All 109 passengers were evacuated without injury. Police in New Jersey have arrested four men they believe sold a potent designer form of heroin. The tainted drugs are blamed in the deaths of 12 people and are believed to have caused more than 100 overdoses in three states. Police with loudspeakers have been driving through neighborhoods in New York warning users against the deadly heroin. The drugs were reportedly sold in the Bronx in bags labeled Tango and Cash and Goodfellow. Police are still searching for the main supplier. Coming up next in Headline Consumer News, Mardi Gras is going from purple and green to red, white, and blue. Watching the headline news on Channel 11. Next time on NOVA, an international team of scientists set out to explore one of the world's most fertile dinosaur fields. They journey to a remote corner of China's Gobi Desert that has been untouched since Roy Chapman Andrews, a real-life Indiana Jones, brought back fabulous skeletons. Taking up the quest where Andrews left off, the scientists fight mud, withstand intense heat, and weather ferocious sandstorms. Dynamite and toothbrushes are used to uncover tiny pieces of a fascinating puzzle. Yeah, right on. Another skull. Their strange discoveries are revealed on The Hunt for China's Dinosaurs. That's next time on NOVA. The miniseries begins on NOVA Tuesday at 8. For Colombian drug smugglers, the most direct route to the U.S. is over Cuba. Scramble the black box, scramble the black box. U.S. law enforcement officials say that for 10 years, South American drug traffickers were protected by Cuban military planes and boats. The Cubans will help them to transfer drugs to the United States and in uh, return bring arms to the communist insurgencies that the Cuban were supporting in Latin America.